Well, Jeff, is it true you're actually leaving the company? <laughs> That's right. I know I've brought Amazon so much success, but now I want to pursue my passions of space exploration. Oh, you mean like Elon Musk? And I'll be taking my hundreds of billion dollars worth of stock with me. So good luck, and I know you'll do amazing things with Amazon, like reboot a successful Lord of the Rings TV show. Oh, geez, that sounds like a bad idea, but uh, okay, I, I guess we've got the money for it. It should be fine. Ooh, about that. Actually, uh, you probably want to lay off a few thousand employees and start discontinuing our old cloud services that we don't have the money for anymore because our income is kind of tanking right now. Wait, why would we have to do that? Oh, because we just lost like a trillion dollars in market cap. It's no big deal. If you need me, I'll be at the Carmen line. Huh. Okay. This should be easy then, right? Nope, you're on a sinking ship. Let's begin. So it's time for a bit of story time when it comes to my cloud cameras that I've been using for the past five years. I originally bought them back in 2017, and at that time, they were kind of expensive compared to what you can get now. Roughly about a hundred bucks a pop. But what I really liked about these cloud cams Amazon made back in the day was, for one, they didn't have a membership. That's right. Even if you didn't have Amazon Prime, these things would give you a live view of the camera feed. They would record the footage on Amazon Web Services and let you view them from a mobile app on both iPad or iPhone, even from a website if you were on a computer and you wanted to view a live feed, and they gave you as much live feed as you wanted. They saved the footage for up to 24 hours, which was usually good enough to let you scroll back and figure out what was going on if you were away and your cameras caught something. And that's what really attracted me to these cameras, was the fact that you didn't have to subscribe to them because I'm kind of sick of all of the memberships that we're being surrounded with these days. Except Talos of Tech Plus, that supports me, so I have to be on board with that. But they were pretty clever designs. You know, they shipped with these wall mounts, and the ballpoint could pivot quite a bit more, but I've been using lots of these things around my office and around the house for years, and then one day, I get an email in May of 2022 saying, To our valued cloud cam customer. That's when I knew something bad was coming. With your help, over the last five years, cloud cam has served as a reliable indoor security camera in a hub for Amazon key compatible smart locks that work with Alexa. And at this point of the email, I was like, oh god, what are they gonna do now? I was convinced they were gonna start charging me or say that you need to have Prime for these cameras to work. But no, it's actually worse than that. It's as the number of smart home devices continues to grow, we are focusing efforts on Ring, Blink, and other technologies that make your home smarter and simplify your everyday routines. Therefore, we have decided to no longer continue support for your Amazon Cloud Cam and its companion apps. What a delicate way of putting it. Simply just, we know you love these features and thanks to your help, we have taken your feedback and realized we can't continue offering this. So even though we promised that you wouldn't have to subscribe and we promised that this would work for basically indefinitely, we've decided that it would be cheaper for us to just no longer support your cloud cameras. So what that meant was on December 2nd of 2022, these things would become completely worthless. The software would not be updated anymore. The servers that they rely on would not be active. They wouldn't even give you a live feed. They wouldn't record anything. Basically just straight up e-waste without question and no amount of software updates I guess could fix them Which I feel really bad about because there's probably a lot of people that bought these and likely a lot of people that just kind of glanced over that email Because it seems kind of inconspicuous and there's not much branding on it or big letters or anything It's just a very plain text email that says yeah, these aren't gonna do anything anymore But luckily Amazon was big enough to realize that they wanted to help me out about this and they felt sorry and bad That these were no longer going to be supported so they they're offering me complimentary Blink Mini smart home cameras that basically they'll replace each one of these that I got with one of these, which are far cheaper than the cloud cams I paid for, which these are starting at about 35 bucks and the cloud cams were around 100, but I will admit over the past few years they've found ways of simplifying and kind of dumbing down smart home cameras so that they're not as big. So these ones are definitely smaller and they look a bit cleaner, but I will admit 
that the pivoting system they put in place is a lot less flexible and it definitely can't reach as many angles as these cloud cameras did. So that's a bit of a bummer and it's basically no change in the sensor quality. It's still a 1080p camera with night vision support and just like these cameras it records motion events but boy the setup process could have been much much easier in my opinion. This is part of the reason I despise buying smart home tech so much because even when you buy smart home accessories from a trillion dollar company they still might discontinue things or change plans or decide that our investment in blink needs to pay off so let's get more people to move towards blink and i think part of the reason that the blink minis are so cheap is because they are relying much more heavily on the membership model so thankfully as an apology amazon has decided to include one year free of the blink subscription plan which means that yes you can view the camera's live feed they do record motion and these actually store them up to 60 days and they have a few more options like graying out boxes that are falsely setting off the recordings more regularly and you can adjust the sensitivity of the motion recording a tad more it's fine it mostly does the same things but what's crazy to me is that even though amazon bought blink and all over these things they say blink it's an amazon company we own blink did you know we bought blink it's crazy how often they're bragging about this and yet blink requires a separate account from amazon i download the blink app and i'm trying to sign into my amazon account and it's like no no you need to form your own blink account and then connect it to your amazon account which of course their password requirements are different from amazon's so i can't just simplify things and just sign into my amazon account no despite this being an amazon owned company i still gotta set up a whole different account with a whole different password get the verify email address email click that and then integrate it with my amazon account that way it will work with my not existent alexa devices great thank you guys for that simple and clean setup process and of course they definitely didn't optimize the app for ipad os which when you're a content creator like me and you're using your phone all the time for recording things you're trying to set up the camera with the ipad app and it keeps failing and failing you're supposed to be able to scan the qr code and it just automatically sets the camera up but of course this ended up being a 15 20 minute process of closing the app opening it again reconnecting it to wi-fi disconnecting it from wi-fi and it was very annoying and problematic but that's all software related Related, and hopefully they improve that with time. But what's most annoying to me about these replacement Blink Mini units is Amazon is like maximizing the amount of potential e-waste with this transition from the old cloud cams, old faithful. They're not the fanciest things in the world, but hey, I didn't have to pay a membership for them. They worked. We put them up around the house. They didn't use that much bandwidth and they recorded things that were going on and I could view them continuously with no membership from my iPad or my iPhone whenever I wanted. But these new Blink Mini cameras, not only do they still have micro USB because we don't live in the future or in the European Union yet would have been such a great opportunity to switch to type C it kills me that it's the end of 2022 and I'm still getting new products in the mail that have micro USB but they like ensured that the cables were not compatible with the blink mini even though these cloud cams also used micro USB which I was not happy about but hey it was 2017 that was more common and widespread then 2022 I feel like there's no excuse but they like bulked up the micro micro USB connector to ensure that I couldn't go back to my existing micro USB cables that were powering these and just pop them off and plug on the Blink MIDI camera. No, I had to unplug the entire cloud cam micro USB cable, which because of its odd shape will only fit this camera, which is now useless. So now I have these like three meter long micro USB cables that I will use for nothing that were specifically built for one purpose, to power this device, which no longer works. And of course, while Apple has ditched the charge brick from their iPhones that cost well over a thousand dollars. Blink has decided to continue including the USB-A 5 watt bricks with their $35 Blink minis, which I'm definitely not going to use. I have infinity of those things in my closet. Genuinely trying to find good places where I can drop off old cables, drop off old bricks that I don't need anymore. Thankfully, I could reuse my old charge bricks because I have so many of them for the new Blink minis because they only need 5 watts of power, but still, probably one of my biggest annoyances with the old cloud cams was it was very difficult to change Wi-Fi networks so because I reviewed so many different Wi-Fi providers over the past couple years I would often have more than one network and I would want to name it something different and anytime you change the name of the network you have to factory reset these things and you have to get like a sim ejector tool or something really long and skinny to hit the reset button on these luckily the blink minis have a reset button that seems a bit easier to press but still I haven't fixed the problem that if you want want to change the Wi-Fi network on your cloud camera, you have to factory reset the whole thing, which requires it to connect 
via Wi-Fi to your phone and set up the whole process over again, which is way too complicated, especially when I know it's possible with things like the HomePod to just tell it switch to this Wi-Fi network. Doesn't need to be factory reset. You can just tell it, hey, just like you tell your phone or your tablet or your laptop, you are on this Wi-Fi network, connect to this Wi-Fi network. It doesn't require a factory reset, but these things still want to do that. Uh, I'm sure there's some bullcrap technical excuse someone's going to write in the comments. I don't care what it is. They should fix it. And it was kind of cool that they include magnets on the bases of the Blink Mini now, but the magnet, I've tried it on several metal surfaces, is pretty dang weak. Something that would be very easily knocked off, in my opinion. So I'm not going to be using the magnet feature, but it just overall feels much, much cheaper. And yet I know that they're selling them probably at a loss or barely breaking even because they're hoping to make money off me in the long term by charging me $3 a month per device in order to have live view of the Blink Minis or to record footage, I have to pay a monthly fee. But they've also suggested this like Blink add-on sync module, which costs like $30 and it requires a USB flash drive, but that will allow you to record motion activities with the cameras, but they'll just save the footage directly to a flash drive. And if you just buy that accessory once, then if you're not paying for the membership, you still won't get the live feed, even if you have the dedicated hub, which is pretty annoying to me, especially considering I used to not have to buy a dedicated hub for local storage. I used to just be able to view these as much as I wanted, and it recorded for at least 24 hours. And it's especially helpful when you have like a package out for delivery, and you want to be able to look outside at the front yard and see when people are arriving or you're waiting for someone to show up. Having that live feed there on your iPad was kind of useful, and I definitely use that with these cameras a lot, but now that live feed feature is basically paid only. I mean, I do get the 30-day free trial with the Blink Minis and then one year of free Blink Plus, but after that, it's gonna cost at least six bucks a month for both of my cameras to be activated or 10 bucks a month for continuous live viewing. The free version only lets you view the live feed for about five minutes and then it cuts out. And all of these little add-ons or paid extras is part of the reason that I wanted to keep holding on to these. All other security cameras I was looking for had these monthly memberships and now it seems like Amazon realized that was not a profitable business. This also potentially means that Blink as inflation arises will be able to raise their prices and be like, well, you know, if you really care about home security, you should probably pay the increased pricing for five bucks a month. So it definitely sucks that they had to restructure their business model, but ultimately I don't understand why this would have been so complicated, but why can't they just send a firmware update to these and make them use the Blink servers? Like if you're going to make me pay monthly fine, that's a business decision and it annoys me, but it's one thing to create a bunch of pointless cameras out there. It's another to ensure none of the old cables, which are quite large and quite plentiful when lots of people like me were buying up these things to put around in our networks and ecosystems. Now all of those cables are just completely worthless. So I do appreciate that they gave me the free year of the basic blink plan. And I like that there's some software advantages like the zoom feature on the cloud cam apps was not very good. It took forever for you to specify what you wanted to zoom in on and the blink cameras don't appear to do that. So there's some advantages, but the UI is still kind of clunky. As you can tell via the iOS and iPadOS app stores, the reviews on the Blink apps are not very good and it is justified. The apps are pretty clunky and they're not very intelligently designed. So if I was running Amazon, I would have just pushed these things harder. I would have like molded Blink in the cloud cam business together and continued support for these things rather than just make all of these e-waste and start from scratch again with hardware that doesn't have as adjustable as a ballpoint or doesn't feel as premium as these things do. So now I've officially switched over to Blink and I can keep you guys posted in the future if I think they're worth it, but I didn't buy these. I didn't choose these on a list. I just wanted my existing cameras that I spent a lot of money on to continue working because that's what was promised to me. So no, I'm not interested in buying some third party security camera service that I'm sure several of you have already recommended, but I'm still welcoming the recommendations in the comments because I'm sure there's some of you out there that have found cheap, reasonably priced cloud cameras that get the job done and have great apps. And if there's some that you like or would recommend, feel free to post them down below. But in the meantime, this is your app sheep here, and I will see you all in the next one. This is creepy.